fair and see it. Control, sleepy pilots. And I'm Shell, is your host here at Tacoma, and he's way out there in Ohio named Spita. That is right. Hey, hey, do you know what kind of spiders we have out here, other than me? Just, uh, all I know is just you. We got orb weavers. Look that up. Orb weavers. Orb weavers. Orb weavers. Interesting spiders, too, if you have any sort of passing interest and you don't instantly want to either scream like a child or or crush it with your boot. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen some spiders that you cannot crush with your boot. Oh, I believe it. Whew. I've seen... I can imagine some spiders out there in the world that are not in Ohio that uh, will probably crush us with their boots. So, uh, yeah. there's that. <laughs> I can't remember like the, what those giant spiders are we had in Afghanistan, but they were huge. They're called Campbell spiders. Camel spiders. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what they were called. Yeah, that's like humongous. They're like maybe the size of your foot. Yeah, and they're, they're attracted to the light. <clears throat> so you go, you get up in the middle of the night, pitch black, and I have a flashlight to get to the bathroom, and they basically chase you. <gasps> really? <laughs> so you walk around with the red lens, or you just step outside, acclimate to the moonlight a little bit, and then go to the bathroom. Yeah. Wow, that's Pretty something freaky. freaky. Yeah, anybody planning a trip to Afghanistan? Probably not a good idea anytime <laughs> soon, but, you know, someday, <laughs> just keep that in mind. Yeah. Good yeah. tips. Good tips. Go find the bathroom in the dark, and good luck. All right, so before we get into back to more topic, um, we are taking to Jason, who is a drummer of both bands, Strangely All Right and Sleepy Pilot, and we just got done playing the song called Control. So you want to talk about that song for a bit? Uh, Control, that was off of our Baggage EP. Um, I'm going to say we did that in 2012, um, and you can get that on... Or any of our music you can find on Amazon or iTunes or any of that stuff. Um, the Bag of GP was the first album that I played on. Uh, mm. The previous album was done all by Sean himself. Cool. Right so on. yeah, that was my and that was my very first album I ever played drums. So. Cool. All right. So you were telling us earlier that you have to get going. So this is your chance. Yeah. To ask me a spider anything you want to hear, or anything you want to ask, anything. Put us so in the I'll ask, I'll, Yeah, I'll ask you guys both the same question, and it's uh, if you could see any band live, living or dead, who would you go see? Prince. <laughs> Prince. Okay. Yeah, that's easy for Shells. Shells is already... Shells yeah, is that's still one alive. I never saw. I never saw Prince. <laughs> I definitely grew up in the Prince days. Yeah. But of course, my Prince fetish is going to be taken care of on September 30th when I get to play la I get to see Rotic City uh, play live and get to podcast it live too at Jazz Bones. So that's super excited. So I'll That get is my- a Prince cover band for yes. anybody who doesn't know out there in the world. Who is based in Portland, Oregon. So they're going to be up here on the end of September, and I get a podcast at live at Jazz Bone. I'm repeating again because it's Prince. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, they're they're a good uh, tribute band too. Um, can't remember her name off the top of my head, but the bass player. Um, I sat down and talked with her a couple times. She's a great musician. Cool, right on. I'll be talking to all of them um, in September 30th. I'm really, really, I'm so excited. Sorry. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Spider, your turn. Oh, there's just so many because there's so many bands that I've gotten to see and so many that I've wanted to see, and it's and so difficult to narrow it down to just a couple. Um, let me see if I can pick one out of the multitude here. Um, I think I, I think it would be really, really awesome to see. Uh, I, I guess like a lineup. Of, of some of the bands that kind of defined the eras that they were a part of, like to see to see the Beatles play in their prime when they were at the top of their game, mm-hmm. and uh, to see them same thing with the Bee Gees and uh, and some of those other. I, I'm not usually much for pop music so much or poppy music, but 
a lot of these bands really influenced how some Everybody. of my favorite bands came about. Yeah. And, uh, oh, and sure. without them starting it, my bands wouldn't exist. So, uh, yeah, any of those those roots kind of bands that really set the tone for how how the landscape of music has changed over the last several, like, 30, 40, 50 years or more. Um, yeah. Big list. Okay. <laughs> Big list. <laughs> Make it a festival. <laughs> Make it a festival. Well, maybe, maybe someday in the afterlife you'll be able to attend that. Who knows? Oh, I can hope. Because uh, there's a pretty darn good jazz band going, or jam band going up there right now with Prince and uh, with uh, with Bowie. Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. And goodness, also goodness, Robin goodness. Williams out there cracking jokes too. So you know it's it's a it's a party up there. <laughs> I want to be I, I want to be in that party. Well, not anytime soon, but that's not the point. Yeah, and down here party. we still have Justin Bieber and people. <laughs> not to be mean to to Mr. Bieber, I'm sure he tries hard. <laughs> and we don't say nothing. <laughs> that's that's that's. That's my old, I'm kind of a jerk metalhead side kind of coming out. You kind of have to fight with yourself sometimes with that kind of thing. And uh, when I was a kid, I was one of those people who was like, oh, I don't listen to them because they suck. And, you know, as I got older, you know, they don't suck. They're just doing their own thing. And that's not fair. You can't yeah. say that about people trying to do their art. But uh, Yeah, I find myself time, doing that too. Yeah, I, like I said, I I make a lot of jokes about, about some folks like like the Bieber, but... Like I said, he's doing his thing, and he's got a lot more fans than I do, so uh, <laughs> and there's that. A lot more money, too. He's, uh... That's right. So, Okay. But yeah. and, any other questions for us at all? Uh, no, not at all. Thanks for uh, having me on and playing some music. It's not a problem. So where can we find Sleepy Pilot and Sleepy All Right? Extremely All Right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh do you want to know about show dates, or do you want to know yeah, where we can find our music? Show dates. Got any shows coming up? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, the next show would be Sleepy Pilot first. Uh, we'll be performing at the Washington State Fair on September 24th from 1.30 to 4 uh, at the Beer Haven stage, mm-hmm. which is a pretty cool stage. They got beer garden and, and all kinds of... Uh, like beer brewing stuff going on there. And then, uh, strangely, all right, our next performance is at Jazz Bones, which you had mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, that mm-hmm. is October 8th. Um, we're doing a benefit. I can't remember what it's for at the moment. So, hmm. but yeah, we'll definitely be headlining that show on October 8th. Cool. Rock on. All righty. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you have a straight journey when you get home, and, and I'll be seeing Thanks. you guys soon. All right, you guys take care. You bye. You too. Bye. All right, so now, Spider, you can go ahead and start doing this day in music, and hopefully other bands will, member of the band will call in next and do some other part of the interview. It'd be awesome. All right. Well, we got some good ones by looking at it already. Very, very good ones. Um... First off, in 1956, on this day in music, Elvis Presley started a five-week run at number one on the U.S. charts with Don't Be Cruel. Ooh, Don't Be Cruel. It went on to become his second, his, uh, oh no, his biggest selling single with sales over six million by 1961 which is a, a pretty big deal for an age where you couldn't just click on your computer and download the track. So six million is a lot of records mm-hmm. purchased. A lot of wax. Yeah, that's a lot. All right. Convince... I can speak well. Coincidentally, on the other side of the album, on the B side, as as it would be known was the song Hound Dog. Nice. Yes. It was Presley. She never with a hound dog. <laughs> All right, that was Crying the first one. Mm-hmm. 
1961, a group from Hawthorne, California, called the Pendletones, Pendletones, attended their first real recording session at a studio in Los Angeles. The band recorded a song called Surfin', which would help define their career as they became the Beach Boys. Cool. So the first song recorded by the band that would become the Beach Boys was today, in 1961. The very next year, in 1962, the Four Seasons started a five-week run at number one on the U.S. Singles Chart with Sherry. Sherry. I can't do it real well this late night. Wow. Play. I thought you were, thought you were a yeah. singer. That was hard. Not, not, uh, not at quarter after one in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that was horrible. I, I, after one in the morning, I sound like I've been smoking a pack of Marlboros, which, which <laughs> I don't. But uh, I could make a pretty good impression of it if I wanted to. <laughs> so, yeah, so, Sherry, I won't sing it again. In 1964, the Beatles on tour in the USA appeared at the public auditorium in good old Cleveland, Ohio. And in true Ohio fashion, during the performance, a group of fans managed to break through the line of police and get up on stage. Police ordered the Beatles off stage in the middle of a song, and the concert only resumed after Derek Taylor got on the PA system and pleaded for order to be restored so that the rest of the performances would not be canceled by the police. Hmm. That sounds like Cleveland, Ohio. Mm. It's certain. <laughs> Very passionate people in Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. Moving on. Mm-hmm. In 1968, the Doors were forced to perform as a trio at a concert in Amsterdam after singer Jim Morrison collapsed while dancing during the Jefferson Airplanes performance. Hmm. Must have been a performance, or he might have been on a, a lot of drugs at the time. Probably so. <laughs> yeah. Continuing on, I told you we had a whole lot of good facts today. Awesome. <clears throat> In 1970, United States Vice President Spiro Agnew, Spiro Agnew, see, never, bet you never thought of a vice president with a name like that, Spiro mm-hmm. Agnew, said in a speech that the youth of America were being brainwashed into a drug culture by rock music, movies, books, and underground newspapers. <laughs> Devil's music. Ah, ha, ha. Anybody else remember that? Hmm? Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. In 1975, Pink Floyd released their ninth studio album, Wish You Were Here in the UK. Ooh. I remember that album. That was an awesome yeah. album. Still one of my one of my favorite Pink Floyd songs, probably. I mean, I my favorite album is probably The Wall, just because that's one of the first ones I gravitate to as a, as a teenager. But uh, Wish You Were Here was a darn good song. 